Hello and welcome to the Kill Gen podcast. Uh, we have a bird control special for you at last. Um, I'm joined by Alistair Fernie, who is Kill Gen's bird control specialist. He has 26 years in the industry and just about a year at Kill Gen now. You probably know Alistair already. Uh, if you don't, then you probably knew Nigel Batten, who was Alistair's predecessor. Uh, and if you don't know Nigel Batten, then you probably don't do bird work. But that's why we're here to do this and just quash some of the myths around it. So I'd like to start with an apology. This was meant to be out sooner. Um, we recorded a while ago but then a few days later we caught wind of the bird license changes so we had to scrap that um, but I've managed to drag Alistair back into head office to record with me um, it's a very very busy period for him so uh, yeah thank you for joining me today Alistair no problem Ada. No pleasure to see you so the, there has been a lot of changes around bird licenses recently as I just mentioned um, I do get the impression that we need to know about the legalities and things like that before actually carrying out the control measures so where can people go to find out further information about that We'll find a lot of information out um, for a lot of pest controllers. It's down to the general licenses. Um, also, if they need to check that out, it's either uh, Natural England or, or DEFRA's website or PCN News. Or they could also contact myself. Um, they could either look in the Kill Gym catalogue or online. Or they could email me direct, which is Alistair, A-L-A-S-T-A-I-R, dot Fernie, F-E-R-N-I-E at killgerm.com or you could call me on the phone which is 0703 714 752 obviously all your contact details are on the Kill Germ website anyway aren't they and they, they are and they're in the new 2020 catalogue so yes I'm in the back page of that face for radio lovely stuff um, so yeah there's been some recent changes and with more to come could you just summarise those for me yeah they've extended the GL 034 35 and 36 till the end of July which is the 31st of July they've just um, taken the applications in for herring gulls um, and lesser blackback gulls on the 15th of March so that's uh, over and done with if any applications need to be submitted after the 15th which we've just gone past um, each job is on its merit um, and there's a bit of work to be done on those so if any of people are applying for AO8s I've, I've told them personally to download it print it out uh, make their own notes on their download on their printout and then make the application online yeah so speaking of changes i know there's been changes to the bird free label recently so what what species does that actually cover bird free only covers um pigeons uh, right. with the hse licensing it's uh, you know good product do you want to have a, a look at i brought some in for you there it smells weird. Yeah, it smells it's that weird. sort of mayonnaise-y, garlicky sort of smell. It's, yeah. uh, it's like garlicky and a bit citrusy as well, isn't it? It's yeah, like, a bit like five quite, spice. Yeah, yeah. If you use that. It's quite a distinct smell. So the, the birds have a strong sense of smell then? Yes, they always have a very good sense of smell. They'll always go back to where they've done their guano. So that's part of the thing. And using bird-free... The, the most fatal mistake for a lot of people I speak to is they've not cleaned down properly or is not taking the lids off. Is there a reason for, for how it looks? Because I know it's got kind of that distinct like, yellowy colour. I, mean, I know people have called it fire gel in the past. Is, is, that, is there a reason for that? Um, yeah, the, you know, obviously there is and there isn't. There, you know, the colour is what the colour is. It's the mixing of the spices and everything else, and and that's how it's formulated. In previous years, it was like a silvery grey colour. Mm. The pot we have now here is like a yellowy off white sort of colour. Yeah, you might say it's yellow. I might say it's like off white. Everybody's different. So yes, the formula has changed. The first generation was like a a jelly sort of that moved around in the pot this is preformed in the pot so it won't spill out so you can put it at any angle um yeah it is but it's it's perceived how the bird perceives it um and it, it works on the senses the the sense of smell and the sight yeah so i, I know you can't just sort of take your bird free and plonk it down is the what do you do to actually prepare the area? Obviously, you know, if anybody's doing bird work, they've got to think of access and getting themselves to where they want to be. Um, wearing the PPE is, is another main important thing of being safe. Um, 
Also, is the clean down. You, you pre-spray with the PX owner kill. You clean it your area off. You pre-treat again with your PX owner kill. Let that dry and then start the, your installation of your pots, making sure you're spacing correctly. So your 20 mil or your two centimeters from your lead edge where your bird flies up to and lands on. And then your spacing. So if it's a a light area, you do it 250 spacings, medium 200, and if it's a heavy um, area, roost, whatever, um, you put that at 150 spacings. So I know you mentioned then about the PX Arnicle and like the cleaning of the area. Is that again to do with the sense of smell? And because they always go back to the same place, so you, as you said, so is that sort of throw them off a bit? Yeah, it's to make sure you're covering over, you're cleaning off them pheromones, the guano, what pheromones that are in the guano, mm. and you, you, you're trying to, you, you're covering that with a, with a cleaning agent as well, which the PX owner kill masks it over. So if bird free is only approved for use on pigeons, then what alternatives are there for other species or, or for pigeons? Um, there's quite a few options um, out there and there's plenty in the kill germ catalogue. If it's, It also matters on how heavy a infestation you've got. If it's a loafing area, nesting area, people don't take into consideration time spans. So if birds are going out for the day and coming back, what the sort of area is used for, if it's just you know an area where they're loafing during the day or it's a night roost area like I just previously said. So yeah, there's post and wire if it's a very light infestation um, and bird spike um, the the avi point um, there's the avi shock system which is more medium to higher infested areas and then you know there's bird free can be used in those scenarios as well and then there's there's netting so there's loads of there's quite a few different ways of treating if not putting a bit of everything into some jobs you have to because you can't net off all areas mm. um, and you sometimes have to mix and match between different products so there'll be there'll be quite a, a range of budget there um, with the treatments that you just mentioned I'd imagine like your post and wiring is fairly fairly low budget um, and cheaper to do for the pest controller and then things like Avi Shocker I'm imagining is more towards the sort of higher end um, but is, is the cost of carrying out bird work a reason that it's quite niche within pest control because as we know not all pest controllers do bird work um, it's not like the typical rodent insect kind of thing um, it is it is as I say, quite niche, but surely the the cost gets passed on to the customer, so you know the pest controller keeps the margin. Yeah, um, the thing with like any any job, uh, not every two jobs are the same. Mm. Um, also, if there's equipment where you have to access, so if it's access equipment. Um, cherry pickers scissor lifts or if it has to be scaffolded um, that's also a consideration you have to take in which is passed on to the customer and also what the products are you know you've got your lighter end um, budget products which is post and wire then when you start moving up it's then your spike then your avi shock and then your bird netting and it's not everybody's niche yeah the thing is it's not just like bird work isn't just sort of another string to your bow it is it, you know, you can really reap the rewards at it because, like we say, it's, it is a little bit niche. If not, if not everyone's doing it, there's more chance that you're going to get work. Um, but I, I'm imagining that you need the right kind of training for bird work. It's not something that everybody can do. You know, you can't just walk into a site and get it done. So where, where can people actually get the right kind of training? Um, the... It is one of the things, training is the most important thing um, because people realise that it's for them or it's not for them and they realise what the products, what what and where they can use the products mm. um, and how, how well it's going to work. Um, there's a lot of different products like the Avishock system that needs a power source and if it doesn't need a power source, it's got a solar panel but people don't realise that solar panel will need charging in winter, in winter yeah. months because it's not getting the daylight. So it's working those sort of things out. With the training, Kill Germ does all the training um, and we do it across the country, northern, southern and Scottish borders um, where you can come and meet me and we'll do the courses and you find out what the new legislational stuff is as well. If you do want to book anything, um, you can go to training at killgerm.com or you could speak to Lisa Wales on 01924 268 
double four five. So the full list of, of trading dates are on the Kill Jane website as well. Yeah. Right, yeah, so we All right, well, uh, thank you for joining me today, Alistair. Uh, as I say, I know you're very busy, so really appreciate you dropping in today. No problem. It's something that we've had a lot of requests for is a bird control special. So I'm, I'm glad we've, we've managed to get it done. Um, and yeah, it was as brilliant and, and, and yeah, it was as brilliant and insightful as, as I knew it would be. Um, so yeah, thank you. Now for regular listeners of the podcast, um, you will know that this is the part where I usually tell you about the upcoming breakfast meetings and workshops for the month. Um, but given the ongoing coronavirus situation, this will come as no surprise to anybody, but we have decided to um, spend all breakfast meetings, workshops and training events just until further notice. Um, this is just following the latest government advice regarding social contact and mass gatherings. Um, keep an eye on your email inbox and Kill Germ social media for updates on this um, and we'll hopefully have some good news for you soon. Now the code you need for the basis CPD points for this Kill Germ podcast episode are AF-BC-0220. That's AF-BC-0220. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.